What's up, everybody? It's Stephen Williams with thecreditrepairshop.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about what's happening with the debt. Also, we're going to talk about people with their finances. I read an article the other day that 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. What was even more shocking about that is I understand a person that doesn't make a lot of money or that, you know, working two jobs or their husband, wife working, uh, working and they barely make ends meet with their expenses. But what the story also talked about was people that make a lot of money and how they are living paycheck to paycheck because they're overspending. And they've bought a lot of stuff and they got a lot of payments going out. And I just think that it's incredible. You just cannot live that way. If you are living where all of your money goes out to someone else, you're not really living. You're actually a slave to them because, I mean, you just can't do it. I understand that it can happen. I mean, when I was in my 20s, early 20s, uh, we went through it, and when I started my first company, when I was uh, 20 years old, in the first four years, that business took off and grew, and we spent more money than we were making. And at that time, I was pulling in over $100,000 a year, and that was back in 1994. And we ended up where we had bought a whole bunch of cars, uh, moved into a big place, and we were just spending more money, even where we had came from, where we was barely making any money to having money, what pe some people would consider a lot of money at that time, to where we just was spending it all. And so you can't be, you can't do it. I mean, there, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If you are spending more money than you make, you have to start cutting those expenses and you have to put together a plan to get out of debt. You just can't continue living your life that way. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to pay yourself first before you start paying all of these damn bills and stuff that you have out there. You got to do that or you'll never even be able to save money. And then when you get older, you won't, you're going to be working hard your whole life rather than being able to relax, take it easy, have uh, retirement funds and, and some investments and stuff like that. So uh, what we're going to talk about today is w what I always talk about, but today we got the new release of debt. Yes, that pe people thought that I lied about this, but these are actual debts and I printed them out that are being sold on the market. And one of the first things that caught my attention is that is that there's over a half a billion almost a half a billion dollars of bad debt that's going to be released into the market that means that literally hundreds of thousands of people or thousands of people are going to be sent letters for these debts that are owed really it's a, it is over a hundred thousand some people because this one here is 43 it's eighty-six million dollars, forty-three, forty-five thousand account holders, people that owe that money. So they're going to be sending out letters to people. If you are on the list of this almost half a billion dollars of bad debt, and it comes from credit cards, uh, from again one point seven million with cosmetic surgeries, and remember I talked about that. That even Rich people aren't paying their bills. Uh, we got uh, mixed credit cards from department store cards, fourteen million. We have uh, a mixture of auto loans and credit cards, eighty-four million. Uh, mortgages, thirty-eight million. Mortgages, thirty-nine million. Uh, payday loans, two million. Retail cards, three million. Retail cards, three point two million. Um, second mortgages, 300 or, or these are, uh, HELOCs or, uh, loans on second mortgage loans on homes. Uh, this is not bad, but 365,000 from this one company, more credit cards, 5.7 million, more credit cards, 1.8 
more credit cards, 1.4. Car dealers, 719,000. Car dealers, uh, 1.3 million. Car dealer, 8.3 million. And that's probably a mixed group of car loans. Uh, another one, 20. This is just unbelievable. Excuse, excuse me, we had a... Uh, and so that phone was on, but this is just unbelievable. Uh, more credit cards, eighty-six million dollars. More credit cards, twenty-nine million dollars. Uh, some other uh, private loans or well, personal loans, twenty-eight million. Uh, more credit cards were with the different uh types of credit cards uh the apartment store cards 27 million 39 million it, unbelievable you gotta be able to do something about this so let's start from the beginning the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to send that letter to you in the mail and it's going to look like a bill but it's actually going to be a request to see if the debt is yours but most people make the mistake of doing one or two things they'll pay it when they probably didn't have to pay it because they didn't prove make the company prove that they have to pay them or that it's not past statute of limitations or number two they don't do anything about it they just throw it away and then the company comes back and they uh, decide to take them to court but when you throw it away and you don't respond properly uh, 30 days later, that gives them legal right to put that on your credit and to start uh, doing any legal action to collect that money. That's why you don't want to just let that sit. I uh, have to pause for one second. All right, I apologize for that interruption. So, uh, so you're going to get the uh, so the first. So uh, let me just back up a little bit. If you don't respond to the letter. Uh, they're going to send you the letter. They're going to that it gives them legal authority to put it on your credit, and then they can start going after you for the money by suing you, taking you to court, starting the collection calls, all of that. All of that action starts from when you don't respond to that thirty-day letter. Even if you do uh, respond to it, if you don't respond to it the right way, it can end up setting you up to where you're giving them proof to uh, be able to come after you for it. Things to keep in mind, never give them any information. If you get on the phone with them, I tell people don't run from collection calls. What you do is you make them prove everything. So you you talk to them on the phone and you say, well, I don't never remember owing you any money. And you leave it at that and you don't answer any other questions about your job, employment status, or any of that stuff. You just tell them to send stuff to you in the mail and you want to correspond with them in the mail. When you get that stuff in the mail, you can review it to make sure that everything is correct. Then you're going to do a validation. If they don't send you everything to prove that you owe the debt, you need to get a validation letter put together with state and the law to make them first prove who they are to show how they came in control of the debt. They can't just say it, and, and if you call them, they're not going to do it. And, they're, they're, and a lot of times they might try not to uh, show you this because this is where you can see how much they paid for it. So you want to know how they, why do you have to pay them? They might say, well, we bought it. Well, then show me the contract that you bought it. Believe it or not, they have to actually show you the contract that they bought it. What I've seen them do is they'll black out uh, the amount that they paid for the debt. And it's usually in a big stack with a whole bunch of other people's names on it uh, when they buy them. But they'll try to hide that from you. And, and they do have a right to hide it from you. Uh, the next uh, step is, you want to validate, number one, that it's not past statute of limitations, that you uh, really have to pay that debt. All right, I put the damn phone on silent. I didn't know that I still had it on. I thought I pushed it. So uh, make sure not past statute of limitations. Uh, you, you made sure that you have to pay them, asking how they came in control of the debt. Also, sometimes you need to make sure that they're not just having it, uh, they're not assuming the debt or they uh, are collecting it for the original creditor. The difference on, on an assumption is where another collector bought it and then another debt collector assumes the debt to be able to try to collect it and they're gonna pay them a piece of the money. So that's where the assumption 
uh, comes in. So when you do a validation, you want them to send you all of the statements and everything that you sign. Like, for, for example, if it's a credit card, you have a right to get all of the statements of everything that was purchased with your signature on it. A lot of people don't know that you can do that. So you get all of the documentation. It does two things from my, my experience. It kind of makes them understand that you know what you're doing and that you will take it further if anything is not uh, done the right way. And then it also helps you if you end up going to court, you can have all of that information for the judge to start a settlement process. And if they don't give it to you on the other side, when you if you go to court, when they uh, end up sending a summons, you will be able to request all that information. And a lot of times they will not have it and you can ask the judge for a dismissal. Uh, so that's the way that you would handle that. And if you look at all of my videos, I tell you to handle it the same way all the time. There's no, uh, you know, tricks or gimmicks to it. If you just do it that way and you're, and you're consistent, yeah, some of the collection, collection agencies are going to play games. They're going to try all types of stunts, but, uh, most of them will just follow the, the law because they're making a killing anyways from people when they do it the right way. So if there's something that's missing with the paperwork, if you just follow that that uh, that formula that I just gave you, they're, nine times out of ten, they're going to end up following the rules and you won't have to uh, pay the debt if they can't prove it. Or it's going to give you a substantial settlement opportunity because of it. So if you uh, need any help, uh, reach out to us uh, in my program the uh, membership program it's one dollar to start in, in $19.99 per month I have a four video series with the uh, worksheets on how to number one get out of debt well get your debt under control and how to uh, uh, get out of debt and let me give you a quick tip on what you can do to uh, get your debt under control if you have no money right now but you don't want to borrow any other money is you could get what's called um, uh, with, go to your to your if you have a car payment you can have them put the payments on the back and you can get a hardship uh, uh, exemption for three to six months depending on your uh, loan uh, lender that you have they'll do that. You can do that with your credit cards. You can do that with all of your loans. You can do it with your house. Take that money, put an emergency fund up, and then pay some debts off with that money. So if you need any assistance, just click any of the links below and we'll be glad to help you. This is Stephen Williams with the CreditRepairShop.com. Thank you.